Commander Cockings and Counter 30 here today again for a new Trek Kills mission briefing, Fan Design. The more relaxed discussion show, we take a look at a fan design ship in the Trek Expanded universe. We discuss the RIs and see what the ship has to offer. This week we are taking a look at the IRW Shashura class, a Tal Shiar Black Ops stealth cruiser launched in 2380. And this ship was designed by Nathan Zechner. Black Ops Zechner. Stealth Cruiser. That sounds like it's an evolution of the Terrorbird. <laughs> Mario. <just> be. <laughs> she has a length of 257 meters, which is, of course, tiny compared to the other Romulan ships we see of the era, the Deridex at 1241 meters, and the Narixon at 603 meters. This is about double the size of the TOS Romulan ship at 131 meters. Yeah, so um, with all these fan design ships, if we have the information, we're going to put it in the description of the video below mm -hmm. so you can see all the facts about it. We're not going to use those facts when we look at the pictures. We're just going to discuss and theorize like we always do with mission mm -hmm. briefings. But you guys have access to all that in the description below, so check it out. All right, so let's get into the episode. Yeah, so this first shot is a Beautiful. nice shot. It's an interesting design. What, what first drags your eye? the 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 romulan aesthetic i love the green glow i mean it just it screams romulan to me it's a bird motif yeah it looks like a bird in flight it's just amazing feels like a hawk to me very deadly yes because yeah, the deridex is like this big long you know hulking beast the nerixon is this very elegant eagle this is a hawk this is a very vicious looking uh ship which is which is great i mean if black ops stealth cruiser tell us sure, that all fits in well mm-hmm uh, yeah, this it, looks great. I, I'm i impressed. I'm very impressed with this one. Yeah, a great, great CG model. Um, and I always want to know, what is those green glows? I, I, I think it's part of the warp matrix, as it would be for other... Probably. Probably. I mean, you don't really see any other warp cells on here. Well, so that's, that's, that's a later picture, I think. But um, oh, I mean, yes. all, the, all the impulse engine control cortex. Yeah. <laughs> what I like about this, especially from this angle, is that you get... Obviously, the feathers are amazing, but then right at the back, you've got these these armored, well, these, these parts of the hull really coming out, and they're so thin. What purpose could they possibly serve apart from aesthetics? You know what I mean? Cloaking cloak generators. There you go. The <laughs> you can always come up with something. Yeah, it, just, it, it feels like a very aesthetically driven ship, and that and it works really well. Um, yeah. All right. Well, let's move to the next picture, which it from the front quarter view. Hmm basically interesting <laughs> still looks very aggressive and there you can see the actual warp nacelle yeah. uh, glow on there so it's got the pontoons underneath like the yeah. Valdor does this is interesting the bridge module really speaks really, really says something it looks a lot like um the legion or the geth from mass effect pushing away from the star trek aesthetic i think to a very sleek like I, why is there even a light at the front you know what i mean that's not very is that a weapon Probably, um, but it kind of—I don't know—that one subtle detail pushes it away from Star Trek to me, uh, for me a little bit. But it's uh, really in super. Maybe it's sleek. a glowing def deflector dish. I mean, the uh, Federation's deflector dishes glow. Why not? Yeah, but it, it's flat. It looks flat. But I'm sure there's another shot of it later on. But yeah, it's very, very aggressive looking. Very, mm. yeah, it looks, looks a bit more like from this angle the Bajoran assault ship, the basic shape, and the curvature of the wings. Yeah, I can see that. I hate the Bajoran ships and everything Bajoran, but... But next picture is <laughs> front from the underneath, and those are pretty nice big nacelles. They, they're they big yeah. at the front, and they, they really cut back at the back, which looks great. Um, and I think I'm right in saying there's a split hull design like the Nerics, and you've got the main bit, and you've got a, a thin line. A bit difficult to see with, with black on black, but I think it's got two levels. Yeah, I'm, I'm certain it does. Uh, probably... Exact same as the uh, the Derridex kind of design design thinking at least. Yeah, great looking warp cells though. Looks yeah, fast. and that and that view really does look like a bird in flight with the wings down. You know, mm. it just I love the aggressive look of it. And, and again with the wings, I mean you've got these details coming out each side of the wing. I mean that, like you say, that could be you know to help the cloak generator by having more surface area to help polarize the quantum field. But it really does give so much more texture and. It gives it like I said, more aggression just by having that extra detail. It's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful ship. I mean, mm -hmm. One of my favorite Romulan designs. Bar none. Wow, already. <laughs> Although we have done yeah. top 10, there's actually not that many Romulan ships, but. I know. That's cool, though. Yeah. 
All right, so the next picture is it from underneath. Wow, that's a lot of detail. Wow. Again, you can really... There's another glowing bit at the back there. I assume that's probably some kind of weapon placement. Yeah, off torpedoes. Uh, so probably matches the front. Yeah. And there's also the green glow on the, the back edge of those wings. Hmm. Probably by impulse strips, I would assume. Maybe, yeah. Bad, but, oh, I'm just so impressed with this ship. I... And again, those 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 warp engines, that looks like a knife now, how it tapers off at the back. That's absolutely something you could stab. I mean, that is aggressive and sleek. Wow. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Um, don't know what else to say about this view, but just I would not want to see this thing coming towards me. <laughs> I think the Defiant would be even be like, ah, we thought we were aggressive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this is amazing. It's cool. Uh, so the next picture is from the bottom. Um, Again, you see the great warp engines, and you see the another part of glow on the edge of the wings that sort of go in a bit. I wonder what they are. Mm -hmm. Maybe plasma conduits. Oh, it's uh, there's even a glowing part under the front uh, yeah. beak there, which I don't know what that would be. That's just kind of. And you, you can see, even at the bottom, there's so much of that feather texturing on the bottom of the second second line of hull, like it. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. yeah, the jagged edges really give it a unique look. It's mm -hmm. not like a smooth, sleek ship. Because the Narixon is, is jagged, but in a sleek way, this is pointy. This is this yeah. is viciously pointy. So the next picture is a view from it of it from the back. Hmm. And it doesn't look quite as aggressive or mean from this view. Um, like most Romulan ships, it has a very thin profile. Yeah. Very minimalistic um not profile um look from the front and the back <laughs> maybe to help in cloaking who knows yeah oh, oh absolutely yeah the, the the quantum slip matrix of the particle diffusion drive uh, yeah that yeah. thing yeah the, see this this view is not what I was expecting i mean it, it is much more the curvature of the wing is so much more rounded than it looks in any other angle and and there's so much more space with that secondary you know line uh, hull bar and everything's just connected like it feels totally different from this angle mm -hmm. huh. and are those pods in the middle on the bottom are they weapons pods or are they for crew like what are they exactly well if yeah. you look at the well uh, on, on, on the bottom view they look like they could be impulse pods because they don't protrude any further from the front they're just at the back that's why we didn't really notice them mm. or they're just detailing or maybe even shuttle bays Oh, I would say sh shuttle bays. Actually, yeah. Like, that's a great idea, actually. Yeah, there are doors. I mean, theoretically, those could be doors. Maybe the top uh, line, if you look at the left-hand side, you've got one little door for a work bee, one for yeah. a smaller shuttle in the bottom for a, a fighter craft. Yeah. There you go. That's great, yeah. Cool. Um, yeah, and there's lots of glowing parts. This does almost look like the front, though, because, again, you've got there's two art, you've got these two glowing green eyes, almost, with a beak. I mean, it, it, yeah. Almost could be the front, almost. Yeah, it could be, but then I think those impulse strips along the wings are just that, they're impulse. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Yeah, that's cool. And the next photo is the bottom. Yep, definitely a good bird motif. And again, you can see all the different dimensionality, all these different pieces. Because you know, yeah. th this designer has just thought, right, I'm going to now put this texture here and this detail there and these protrusions. Like, it all flows together into this great design. And they had to think this through. And that's, that's, that's what is great about design. It, it's, yeah. it's you meld it and it becomes something amazing. And this, this is an amazing shape. You and know? I got to admit the last view we just had of it very, was underwhelming for me. Every other view I've loved this one. I really like uh, this. Yeah. You can actually see that that bottom part possibly could separate and become mm -hmm. its own ship. But with the warp engines and, and shuttle bay. Yeah. And probably part of the main body, which is up mm. above. I don't know. Mm. I'm sure there's some way to separate it and have two very unique ships. Because even on the underside of those wings near the tips, those could be the nacelles for the, the main ship. Mm. Maybe it has warp as well. Who knows? Maybe. I'm just speculating. That's what the show's about, Samuel. It. it I, I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be interested to know where all the weapons, though, are, where the, where the disruptors are and where the torpedoes are and what exactly it's armed with. Because there isn't, there is, there's no specifically obvious points apart from just light light or just weight or tips as it were tips of points i'd be interested to know where the disruptors and things are yeah, yeah. absolutely and one thing i had to point out near the middle there there's a lit up part is that a deflector or is that a weapon i know i know at the back it's probably a weapon i believe that that's probably a deflector yeah we'd have to get a it's probably gonna be a front view 
soon we'll be able to see. Yeah, there um, is. And we'll... yeah. So the next right. picture is a really nice shot of the wings, and yes, definitely feathers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Much like the uh, Klingon bird of prey for some reason. But uh, or the, the Nerix Broly... or the Nerixen, as is the Roman aesthetic. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, absolutely. But the the glowing parts really. Well, they're not painted though, you know, as as the Klingon one. So obviously, it's not as it's not as obvious. Yeah. yeah. There's no red for the wings, as Klingons that's would do. But, yeah. That's because they moved beyond that. Okay. But anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the glowing green parts really m make this thing pop and mm -hmm. give it more dimension dimensionality, like you say. So, I, I really, I really love it. The detailing in this is fantastic. See, this this angle almost feels like the wings can retract. I'm sure they do have some kind of movement. I, that would it, make perfect sense. Yeah, I don't know why they would, but I mean, it feels like maybe to lower their, uh, you know, energy profile, it goes into some sort of stealth mode where it could be shrinks the ship, but. It, I love the different coloration of the of the wing parts because it just again gives it such texture, such depth. All right, so the next one is a shot of the the tip, the nose, the beak, whatever you want to call it. Uh, that does seem like an odd kind of placement and angle for a deflector. Yeah, I. So I think the deflector is probably the one underneath that we saw it's earlier. Probably a disruptor, but like I said, that it's very flat detail. It's not. It should be recessed a little bit and have some internal, you know, elements that would be, I don't know. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, that, that's the least Star trek -y part of this, I think. Uh, I think it pushes a bit beyond what I would call a Roman aesthetic. Yeah. Um, but it's, I mean, it's very sleek, it's very cool, and I like I like the details. And the next one is the front, uh, like you said, and you, yeah, that that lower part, probably a defector, feels, feels like it could be. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't look as though there's uh, shuttle bay doors on the front of those pods. Of no. course, we can't see the top really because it's black from the shadow. But you probably don't need front-facing doors unless you want obviously through through traffic, as it were, which would be kind of useful. Well, with a pod like that, it would almost make sense to have through decks though, mm. instead of just a standard rear-facing one. Because mm. I mean, if it, the whole pod's dedicated to the shuttles, it would be much more much more logistically mm. sound to have a, a through. -deck. Unless they're just suicide shuttles, as they used to use, in which case, you know, so it says black ops warp in. Launch eight, they only eight, use suicide seven. shuttles in extreme circumstances. Well, it's a Black Ops Tower Shell cruiser. Every circumstance is, a, is an extreme circumstance. That's why it's oh, been, you put it that that's way, why it's been called in. <laughs> uh, I do like the look of that that front um, beak from this point of view. It's an interesting, hmm. interesting curvature to it. But like like with the back, like I said, this just is so unimpressive to me compared to what the rest of the ship looks it like. It looks like a bow and arrow. Or a bow, sorry. Yeah, green arrow. There you go. That's hey, it, it really, again, each angle gives a different perspective, but it doesn't feel like there's much physical space. I know the Nerixen doesn't have either, but this is a very small, compact warship. Well, stealth cruiser. I mean, this is not going to be one with huge crew quarters or, you know, big cargo bays or science labs. This is this is definitely a ship for, for built for purpose. I mean, you see it from this point of view as well, uh, that whole, my theorizing, theorizing that it separates really doesn't make sense, because I don't think it would work so well in this when you look at it like this yeah you all you'd really gain yeah yeah there's not really much maybe that bottom part can separate and become like a carrier for the shuttles and it can go off and do its own mission while the main ship is i don't know <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it'd be kind of neat if the the main warp nacelles were actually mounted to the the bigger wings so all right so the next picture is the side view and once again this is a very impressive view for me Definitely looks like a bird in flight. Those tail feathers, the wing shape, even the head, just, it's very aggressive. For, I, I love this. It feels like this sort of ship, it can cut through butter or, you know, cut through another ship. You know, just like... Yeah. Although then it hit the flimsy dual hull thing and destroy itself. But <laughs> initially it'd be great. This is very reminiscent of the terror bird that we did a Star Trek original mm -hmm. on. Uh, but just sleeker. That that profile. But yeah, it's, it's, it's like almost like an advancement of the terror bird. So I think Sorry, Michael. <laughs> all, all congratulations! You've made, managed to make some, you know, ones twenty fourth century, ones twenty third uh, century. It's great. Well done, guys. <laughs> but Although, yeah, the profile view, the, just the shape of those wings is is exactly the same as terror bird, and just I don't know. I, I sorry, I have to mention it because that's what I see when I see this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did, but we obviously yeah. worked quite a lot with that one, so we're allowed to. Yeah. So next picture is the top, and it, it's again a beautiful shape. All the detail, the the green bits, 
that you know that there's 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 not too many like it accents it just enough and again the god the the, the wing tips at the back i mean they are they are stabbingly jagged um, i'd be fascinated to know what's in them because they're not big it must be something to do with the cloaking matrix must be science yeah, uh, this actually reminds me a lot of the the uh, bird of prey we see in Enterprise, uh, just from the yep. top, the shape of the the, the wing the pylons. Well, it's, it's obviously got that aesthetic, that advanced yep. texturing and whatnot. Um, and then the green lighting in the same hull color. Yeah. I mean, beautiful design. Absolutely, I can't say enough about it. I love this. I love this ship. I love it. Okay. And the last view is the first view. <laughs> We're back to this awesome shot of it. So, great ship. I love it. It's really, yeah, it's a very nice evolution of the Romulan design, but very built to purpose. It's not, you know, the next big warship. It's not a Dederodex, but pushed forward. It's very built for purpose, and this is definitely something I can see flying around Romulus or not, because it's Tal Shiar, so be cloaked because it's secret. I can definitely see this as being an invisible ship in a battle. There you go. Behind enemy lines doing stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. I think that's definitely the definitely the Terror Bird Mark II. Ooh, there you go. Awesome. Well, that's it for this ship from us. Uh, we have the full details on the ship in the description below, so please read them. Like I said, we don't beforehand. We just kind of go into this and speculate on what we think, as we do with all mission briefings. So I yeah, want we... you guys to check it out and learn more about this ship and give your comments and suggestions below. Yeah, and that is it for another full episode of Trek Yards, another fantastic design and beautiful 3D model. As I have said, love the detailing. And anyway, please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and then you know, share it maybe everywhere, anywhere, because that'd be great. And the only way we can grow this channel and grow Trek Yards is by you sharing it and, and making that extra bit of noise in the big wide world out there. Um, and if you can, and if you love our content, please do go over to our Patreon page and give us anything you can on a monthly basis because we always want to do more with this show but it takes so much time as we keep saying we want to do it more full time but we can't do it without your support so give us a watch maybe a donation please please don't know um and please guys let us know what you think of this ship the shashara in the comments below do you love it do you hate it do you think it's a terror bird evolution <laughs> what do you think anything and i'm sure the designer would love to hear your feedback and that is it for another Trek Yards. So until next time, this is Commander Cockins. And Captain Foley. See you next time. Bye, everybody.